What if I told you that Nintendo was actually lying about the numbers on these weapons and that there are actually hidden numbers that are never shown to you at all in the game? I'm going to be revealing the truth to you about the true damage of weapons versus the shown damage of weapons. There are three main melee weapon types in the game single-handed weapons like your swords and boomerangs, two-handed weapons like claymores, and spears which just look like spears. There is a basic formula for figuring out weapon damage that everyone uses that's pretty obvious. Weapon plus additional damage plus modifier equals the total shown damage. Weapon being its base damage, additional damage is whatever you fuse to it, and the modifier is the plus 1 to plus 10 that you'll get on your weapon from an Octorok enhancement or from having higher EXP in the game where the weapons that drop have modifiers on them, or you could be getting these off of the Ghost Soldier statues in the depths as well. So for example, let's say I had a pristine Knight Broadsword. Well, this is going to show up as 18 damage. If I add a Mauduga Jawbone to it, that's going to be another 32 damage. And maybe I also Octorok this weapon so it has a plus 10 modifier. That would be 18 plus 32 plus 10, which would give me a total damage of 60. Pretty simple, right? If you have attack up 3, you're just going to multiply the total damage by 1.5. This can be either an attack up armor or an attack up 3 food. 60 times 1.5 is going to be 90, so you'd be dealing 90 per hit. If you had a bone proficiency outfit on, like the Radiant Armor or the Evil Spirit Armor, this would multiply the Molduga Jaw attachment you have, causing it to be 60 times 1.8. That'll give you a total damage output of 108 per hit. If you combo up an attack of 3 food with the bone proficiency armor, then you can take the total damage from the formula and multiply it by both 1.5 and 1.8. That would be 60 times 1.8 times 1.5, and that'll give you a total of 162 per hit. Now here's something really cool. If you're on your last heart, night weapons deal times two damage. So comboing that with everything else, that would be 60 times two times 1.8 times 1.5, and that would give you 324 damage per hit. Night weapons don't seem so bad now. Here's a few more fun examples with multipliers once you get the total damage of a weapon. If you hit an enemy that is frozen, that's going to be a times 3 multiplier. With attack of 3 food and bone proficiency and you being on your last heart, that's going to be 60 times 2 times 1.8 times 1.5 times 3, giving you 972 damage per hit. That's a lot. If you sneak strike an enemy, that's going to be an 8 times multiplier. If you do it on your last heart with attack of 3 food and with your bone proficiency armor, that's going to be 2,592 damage per hit. So you can see that taking the total damage of a weapon and then comboing it with all the other multipliers is going to be very simple to figure out the final damage of it. Unfortunately, this easy plug-in formula of the weapon and additional damage and modifier is only going to apply to the single-handed weapons, making its shown attack actually be its true attack. But the double-handed weapons and spears, well, the game is lying to about those. This is where things start to get a little more complicated. I talked with Echo, a data miner who did a deep dive on weapons along with Crimson Starfall. And by data mining and playing around with some game code, it was uncovered that the developers had a big secret about shown damage versus true damage. For two-handed weapons, Echo coded the true damage to be 10,000. However, when the game was opened and the weapon was looked at, it ended up actually being 9,500, which is the shown damage. So the hidden multiplier here is 0.95. So how exactly do you figure out the true damage of a two-handed weapon? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It lets me know you enjoy videos like this. So for a two-handed weapon, the formula is going to be called the True Weapon Base Attack, or abbreviated by TWBA. So for this formula, whatever the shown damage of your weapon is in the game, you're going to divide that by 0.95, then you're going to add 1, and then you're going to round down to a full number and get the true damage of that weapon. Let's do an example together. This is a pristine Royal Guard Claymore that shows an attack of 39. All we have to do is take 39 and divide that by 0.95 to get 41.05, and then add plus one to give us 42.05. Then round down that number and you'll just get 42. And that's actually the true damage of the weapon per hit and what it says in the game files, but we are not done yet. What if you wanted to know the damage with a material and a modifier? Well, you're going to have to do a little math for this too. You're going to take the true weapon base attack you got from the previous formula and then add that to the material plus modifier 
divided by 0.95 and then round that down. So this is what the formula would look like. So you're going to take the true weapon base attack that you just calculated plus the round down number of the additional damage plus modifier divided by 0.95. So let's use our Royal Guard Claymore as an example from the first formula. And for this, let's go ahead and add a Silver Lionel Sable Horn, which is plus 55 and a plus 10 modifier on it. So here's what the equation would look like. 42 plus the round down, 55 plus 10 divided by 0.95. You're going to do the bracket math first, so go ahead and add the Silver Lionel Sable Horn plus your modifier. Go ahead and add the weapon attachment plus the modifier to give you 65 divided by 0.95. You're then going to come up with 68.42. Round that number down, you're going to get 68 and then add that on to the 42 from before to get a total of 110 true damage versus what the game will show you at 104 damage. Now that you have the true damage number, all you have to do is multiply by any of the other buffs or multipliers that are in the game. For example, when a Royal Guard weapon is about to break, it's going to be dealing times two damage. So take that 110 times two and you'll get 220 damage. If you're wearing an attack of three armor, then you can just do 110 times 1.5 and you can get 165 total per hit. If you have the low durability, and have attack up 3, then do 110 times 2 times 1.5 and you get 330. And on the final hit before the weapon breaks, which you would only be really using this when you're on the back of a Lionel, that's going to be doing critical damage, which is going to be another times 2. So take that all with your attack up and you'll get 110 times 2 times 1.5 times 2 and you'll be dealing 660 damage. You get the point. Once you get the total true damage of the two-handed weapon, you can then just multiply it by whatever multipliers you want to combo with it. The takeaway from two-handed weapons, if you don't care about any of this math, is that it has about a 5% increase in damage than it actually says it is. Being buffed makes sense because these are slow weapons and they should do more damage. Now let's talk about spears. So Echo put in the game code internally that the spear should do 10,000 true damage. But when the game was opened up and the spear was looked at, it showed up as 13,269 damage. This is actually really, really bad because everyone thinks spears are overpowered when in reality, they are much weaker than what the game shows you and they're being completely inflated. So spears are actually nerfed. So in order to calculate the true weapon base attack of a spear, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to just take the shown attack and divide it by 1.3268 and then you're going to subtract one and round that up to the nearest whole number. Let's do an example together with the pristine Zora Spear, which has a shown attack of 11. So let's plug this in. You're going to take your 11 and divide that by 1.3268. You're then going to come up with 8.29. You're going to subtract one from it and then get 7.29. And because we say we have to round up to the nearest whole number, anything above seven gets rounded up to Eight. You're going to get the true weapon base attack of the spear to be just eight. Yup. So while the spear shows 11 damage in the game, it's actually going to be dealing eight damage. And we know this not just based on the math, because the game code states that it's eight. And this calculation was just to show you how we got to that number. But we're not done yet, because what if you wanted to know the damage with the material and modifier? Well, you're going to have to take the true weapon base attack you got from the previous formula, and then going to have to add the material plus modifier divided by 1.3268 and then round that up. So here's what the formula looks like. And for this example, let's go ahead and add another silver Lionel horn, which is going to be plus 55 attack and the modifier of plus 10. Let's plug this into the equation. So it's going to be eight plus the roundup of 55 plus 10 divided by 1.3268. 55 plus 10 is going to be 65, so that's going to be 65 divided by 1.3268. That number is going to give you 48.99, which you will round up to the nearest whole number, which is going to be 49. Go ahead and add the 8 plus the 49 to get the total true damage at 57. Now, the cool thing about Zora weapons is that when they are wet, the weapon plus the attachment doubles. So as a multiplier, all you have to do is take that number, 57 times 2, to get 114 true damage, as opposed to the game, which is gonna tell you it only deals 152 shown damage. That is quite a difference in numbers. Now you can continue to smack on more multipliers to find out the real damage of a spear, but I'm not gonna go and show you all that. 
If you don't care about the math, just know that spears do about 25% less damage than they appear to be. Okay, so I've linked this down in the description below, and what you want to do is whenever you open it after the video, make sure to watch this part first, is cycle over to the weapon section over here. And when you cycle to the weapon section on this sheet, and, and I know you're saying, Philly, why did you wait till the end of the video? Well, it's because I wanted you to understand how we even got those numbers and the reasons behind it. You're gonna see the base attack over here versus the shown attack over here. Shown attack is all the numbers that the game is going to provide. And you can control F or command F, depending if you have a Mac or PC, whatever weapon you want, and you'll find it on here. So you'll know the difference between shown and the base attacks. So you don't even have to waste your time doing the calculations, but you'll know exactly what you need to know about which one's going to be the best for base attack. Now we're going to take this one up further and also shout out to the data miners for putting this all together. This is amazing. This one's going to be big. Now what you need to do is because this is an only read file, you're going to have to take file and then make a copy for yourself. Otherwise you can't plug in anything into this, right? So once you do that, you'll get your own sheet, right? Just like this. Now, for example, a lot of people say that the light scale trident with the Malduga jawbone with attack up and with the bone proficiency armor is going to be the best weapon in the game. Let's go ahead and see how powerful the light scale trident is. So I plug this in and it's going to show me that the shown damage is 22. But with our math, we know the real damage is going to be 16. Now we're going to add the fuse material here. So just look for the fuse material. I'm going to type in Molduga. There we go. The Molduga jaw. And that's going to be an additional 32 damage. That's then going to show up under the true damage versus the shown damage over here. This is the big one you want to pay attention to. Now, the only reason why I'm not adding the attack up modifiers is because legendary weapons can have a plus 10 modifier. Now, the thing about Zora weapons, we said, is when you have a wet, it'll go times two. So here we go. Now the weapon is going to be showing shown damage versus true damage. You can see the difference is growing ever so bigger. And if we're going to have the attack up buff along with bone proficiency, so the bone proficiency armor with the attack up elixir, we plug that in. So now we have all the stuff we need. We have the weapon wet, so it times two damage and the buffs, right? So you're going to see exactly that the total output damage on this exact weapon is actually going to be 221. That's going to be the total. So what it's doing is it's just going to go ahead and take our true damage and multiply all the multipliers to get your total output damage. So that's the beauty of this calculator. So it's always going to maximize it at the bottom. So these both sheets are down in the description for you guys to help. If you found this video very helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out this video. Seriously, this is going to help you a lot when it comes to weapons in the game.